Welcome everyone as you come into the webinar. We'll just take a few minutes to ensure that everyone can enter um, before we start. So today we're um, undertaking another of the Reconciliation Victoria webinars for um, relating to education and truth telling in education. Today, we're really, really fortunate to have a special guest with us today, Brent Ryan, who's the Assistant Director um, of Education at the Europe Justice Commission. My name is Sarah Joyce. I'm the Education Officer at Reconciliation Victoria and I um, coordinate these series of webinars along with First Nations partners to try to um, enhance knowledge and um, in this education space. So before we begin today, I would like to give an acknowledgement of country. Reconciliation Victoria acknowledges the traditional owners of country throughout Victoria and recognises First Peoples continuing connection to our land, waters and community. I'm currently on Wurundjeri land of the Kulin Nation people. We pay our respects to elders past, present, who carry the memories, traditions, cultures and aspirations of First Peoples and who forge the path ahead for emerging leaders. I would also like to pay a personal acknowledgement to the strength and resilience of all Aboriginal people and thank those who share their knowledge and wisdom to us. Finally, I would like to acknowledge that sovereignty has never been ceded on this land. So I'm gonna throw over to Brent now to introduce himself. Um... Thanks, Sarah, um, and thanks everyone else. Yeah, I, I just, thanks for the acknowledgement. I'm also um, on Wurundjeri Wurrung country um, of the Kulin Nation in Greensboro here where I live and work. And I um, just wanna acknowledge their elders, especially um, Ani Irene Morris and, and Sue Ann Hunter, who I have the privilege of working with every day um, and blessed to learn off and acknowledge the, the, the 80 odd plus teachers and educators that have, have joined us so far. Um, you know, take time out of your busy day to, to continue learning and ensure that the First Nations students that you teach um, thrive and that all students can learn from our rich culture, um, you know, is appreciated. So thanks for that. And um, yeah, it's obviously an exciting time coming up soon with, with Reconciliation Week. It's it's anchored by two kind of really important dates. Um, May 27, so Saturday, is, is the referendum um, from 1967, day that um, we were included in the census and, and that states couldn't make policies to harm our people. And then it's kind of bookended by June 3, which um, for those who are aware is, is Mabo Day in 1992, the High Court um, finally acknowledged that we did have rights and um, were, were inhabitants of our own country before the British arrival. So um, kind of getting rid of that terra nullius term. So um, really important week coming up and Sir Doug Nichols around. There's a lot happening at the moment that, um, that people can hear about, learn about and, and teach in their space. So thanks for having me. Pleasure. And just a, a throw off to the beautiful Naraganawali website, which has a lot of really fabulous resources for educators, both through early learning to primary and secondary, um, and in particular have a lot of resources for National Reconciliation Week, which you can use to enhance um, knowledge and education in this space. So yeah, we encourage you to, to go to that website. Um, I might just, yeah, before I kind of talk a little bit about your book and, and some things that I've found that work in, in the education setting, it might just interest myself. Um, so I'm Brent Ryan, a, a muddy, muddy man. So um, Bell Reynold is where my mum's country's from, the Gorringe and Bullman people. And, and Bell Reynold is 100 k's north of Swan Hill. So there might be a river that comes up. There's a picture, Sarah, that might uh, thank you for that. This is when I was on country in 2019, um, the Murrumbidgee River. Um, and I'm heading back in June, in a, in a couple of weeks, to visit Mungo National Park, where the cold, oldest remains of, of Aboriginal people have been found there 40,000 plus years. So I've never been to Mungo before. It's a little bit north of Bell Reynold and um, just continue learning about where my ancestors are from and, and mum's people is, um, is really exciting. And 
Um, Dad's side is, is Irish, which I also like to acknowledge as well, um, a place called Limerick. So my kind of professional journey, just to set the scene, was um, I was fortunate enough in 2014 to meet a fellow called Brendan Murray, um, and he gave me an opportunity to teach at Parkfield Youth Justice Centre um, for three years and two years at the Marsbury Youth Justice Centre. So our kids who have been in detention and locked up and um, on remand um, and who have incredible strength and resilience that I was fortunate enough to, to work alongside for five years and um, did a Teach for Australia kind of program to, to get the teaching degree part sorted. And um, I love my time there, but probably the frustration of the recidivism rates and the isolation and, and feeling a bit helplessness probably was very frustrating. Um, so um, that led me to kind of lead to, to working with, with my people a little bit better and connect with my culture at Victorian Aboriginal Child Care Agency, which is the largest Aboriginal organisation um, in Australia. And they kind of work to keep kids and families connected to their culture, um, be involved in that child protection removal process to, to keep kids with family. Um, and that was an amazing kind of opportunity for four years based at Preston um, in our learning and development and education space with kinship carers and, and caseworkers and those kind of things. But again, um, after four years, kids are still being removed at a, at a higher rate, higher than they've ever been. Um, the, the department, the racism, those kind of things gets frustrating. So um, hence I moved to the Europe Justice Commission, which I'll talk about in depth shortly um, and, and a bit more hope for that systemic change. Um, I just want to include a picture of my son, Charlie, who, is 15 months, um, despite the fact he keeps him up at night, um, you know, to have him grow up in culture early from, from the moment he's born and have opportunities to grow up in a world where I think he'll be able to practice his culture a lot better and more strongly than my mum could and, and even that I could and the opportunities afforded to him um, make me excited. So that's at the recent survival day um, kind of march or, or kick on at the end at the, at the um, Sydney My Music Bowl. And, and just finally, in my personal life, I, I play some football at... Beechworth um, up in the northeast of Victoria where my partner's from and her family and um, that's a picture from our recent Indigenous round that um, I'll talk about again at the end around what individuals can do kind of outside of work and not just in that nine to five space so um, that's enough about me. <laughs> Thank you for sharing Brent. Um, everybody we're going to be using Mentimeter throughout the presentation. If you're not familiar we have one of our workers on the chat who can answer any questions that you have. Otherwise, if you have your mobile phones handy, you can scan the QR code that's just appeared on the screen, or you can go to menti.com and use the code that also appears there to enter um, your responses to these questions. We'll be asking a few throughout the webinar to keep it nice and interactive, but we're also really keen to, you know, for you to be able to share your knowledge with us and for us to get a good understanding um, of where people are in this space. When people have finished entering in results here too, we'd love if you'd be able to pop down in the chat what country you're on at the moment. Brent and I um, let you know what country we're coming from at the moment on, in this webinar, but we'd love to hear where you're on as well. So yeah, I forgot to mention that at the start. If you want to pop that in the chat, that'd be amazing. Always with these Mentimeter questions that we're putting in the webinar too, there are no wrong answers. We, um, the, the results are also completely anonymous as well. So, you know, everyone is on their reconciliation journey that comes to these webinars, but everyone's in a different position. So there's no um, stigma or shame to not knowing. I, I personally acknowledge constantly that there are areas that I have very little um, understanding of, but I find that as a really exciting opportunity to be able to forward um, my reconciliation journey. There's we'll try and um, we'll try and make today as well, yeah, as engaging as possible. Obviously, we don't have that much time um, and we are on a Zoom webinar, but we'll have some some things to kind of make it, try and make it as engaging as possible. And I know that we're obviously got um, a bit of a spectrum of not just people on different journeys with their knowledge and, mm -hmm. and and that kind of thing but also early educators to kind of those senior teachers as well so we'll try and I think it's it, we've got to kind of pitch to a level where everyone can take something from today hopefully yeah lovely okay thank you everyone for inputting that's really amazing um just keep your phones handy because we'll be um asking these questions as we go through the webinar 
Um, so I thought um, it might be kind of relevant just to set the scene a little bit in regards to what's happening kind of at a, at a national level and, and then break it down to what we're doing in Victoria. Um, this is an image of our Prime Minister Anthony Albanese um, at the Gama Festival last year, just after he was elected. Um, and he gave full commitment to the Uluru Statement from the heart. So people might be hearing about the Uluru Statement now for the first time. They might be hearing about the voice referendum coming up, obviously. Um, so there was kind of a few things in 2017. There was 250 kind of Aboriginal leaders that got together um, in Uluru and, and made a kind of a statement of what, what First Nations people want in Australia and what they want from the government as a commitment and, and actions, I suppose. And there was two kind of things from that. One was... Um, enshrining the First Nations voice into a constitution, which is the, the upcoming referendum, um, which is a, a national thing that's happening later this year. And then there was also a kind of a Makarata, which is a group to kind of supervise truth telling and treaties um, in, in the country as well. So the, the language that gets used is, is voice, treaty and truth, the three things that um, are happening at varied stages throughout Australia. Um, Victoria are actually the first to be embedding and beginning all three. So um, that's a little bit about the voice and there's a, there's a heap of resources out there that people can inform themselves on. Um, but that'll be happening later this year and it's an exciting opportunity. We might just go to the next, Sarah. So the other part in Victoria is the First Peoples um, Assembly of Victoria. So they are the body responsible for negotiating the treaty. So um, for those unaware, Australia are the only country, Commonwealth country, that don't have a treaty with government and their first peoples. So um, you might watch the Commonwealth Games and there's only 180 kind of teams or, or countries that play in the Commonwealth Games and Australia are the only country that don't have a treaty with their government. So that's actually happening now in Victoria, just Victoria. It's other states are doing their own thing in territories, but the Victorian government are negotiating with the first peoples assembly of Victoria at the moment. And they've got their elections on to um, elect their new members that will drive that next phase. Um, so, Yuruk Justice Commission is separate. So where I am now, Yuruk is separate to First Peoples. First Peoples are driving the treaty. Yuruk Justice Commission, um, which I'll talk about my work in a minute, are a separate body that we report. I suppose we have to give um, our reports at the end of our work to Yuru um, to the government and to First Peoples to kind of drive change and agendas and recommendations. So um, they coexist at the same time at the moment. Both are live. Both are happening. And the First Peoples actually asked the government to set up a truth-telling body which stemmed from the Uluru Statement from the heart, because without truth, they didn't think there could be a treaty. So um, a lot of our work will feed into what First Peoples are doing. So just um, we find in communities still a lot of people get confused. Are First Peoples Yuruk? Um, are Yuruk First Peoples? No, we're separate bodies. Um, and that's the voice, national happening at the moment. Truth, that's us at Yuruk, truth. And treaty is First Peoples um, Assembly of Victoria. So just to separate those is important, I think. Um, just wanting to get a bit more of an understanding if people have heard of the Uruk Justice Commission before. And so we'd just love if you could give um, your serious answers by Inventi. Oh, I love that everyone's so onto it so quickly. It's quicker than I thought. I was worried it was going to take too long. It's great. No, no, people are savvy. <laughs> Also, I should add, if you have any questions at any point in time to just please pop things into the chat. We're giving you a lot of information um, in a short space of time. So there will be a resource sheet that will be sent to everyone post webinar as well with really important links and additional add-on readings. <clears throat> just give it a second more to get everyone's input. Well, I'm really, really happy that we're able to tell you about the Europe Justice Commission um, today because I find this in my chats out in the broader um, community that people aren't necessarily aware of the Justice Commission, but as Brent has outlined, it's such a crucial part of um, <clears throat> truth-telling in this country and in Victoria leading through to a treaty. Um, I'm just going to play a short kind of three minute video that really summarizes what your rook's about and touches on some of those kind of connections to treaty, how we're involved, our timelines, those kind of things. It's nice to hear a different voice as well, but it's a really succinct um, video. So you might want to play that, Sarah. Thanks. And I don't know if we have volume, Sarah. Oh.
what the chip to pause and Sorry, we're having a little bit of trouble with the video, apparently, that you, you can't hear the sound. Um, sorry, guys, the joys of technology when we did the run through of this, everything was fine. <laughs> Here we are, quick shared sound, so this should work now. Yeah. The Europe Justice Commission yep. is looking into the historic and ongoing systemic injustice experienced by our people in Victoria. Uruk is independent of government. It is a royal commission with strong powers, led by First Peoples. Four of Uruk's five commissioners are First Peoples, and three are Victorian traditional owners. Historical and ongoing injustice means Yuruk will hear about things done in the past and the things that are still happening now. Yuruk is an opportunity for First Peoples to tell the whole story. It's an invitation for Victorians to listen. Because we all do better when we understand the truth about our past and present. But telling the truth is not enough. We must have change. Uruk will deliver reports to the Victorian Government and First Peoples Assembly of Victoria that will recommend changes to the system and laws affecting our people. Uruk's work will also support the treaty making process between the Victorian Government and First Peoples. Uruk will help build a better future for everyone. At Uruk, truth telling is being done in different ways, including through public hearings, yarn in circles, research and submissions. Uruk is meeting with and hearing from people in Melbourne and regional Victoria on country. Uruk will ask questions of government and organisations. The Victorian government and people in power will be held to account for laws and policies that have harmed our people. Individuals, families and groups can share their truth with Uruk by making a submission. Sharing a truth will help create a public record of injustice and recommend changes to address past and ongoing injustice. You can also share the truth about the strength, survival and resilience of our people and our culture and knowledge. You can make a submission in different ways. You could write it, record it, make a video, share documents or an artwork. Submissions can be made on Yuruk's website. You can choose to make your submission public or you can ask for it to be kept confidential. You control how your information is used. Yuruk has a counselling team who can give you free and confidential support before, during and after your submission. Yuruk also has an optional free and confidential legal service that can give you advice about sharing your story safely with us. By telling the truth and building understanding, Yuruk will help to transform Victoria so we can all turn a new page together. Because when our culture and communities are strong, everyone benefits. The Yuruk Justice Commission. Truth. Understanding Transformation. I'll just add to that. So there's kind of three goals at the end, truth, transformation. So it talks about our first one is getting an official public record of, of first people's truths and experiences in um, Victoria since colonisation to now. So um, obviously we know a lot of the, the history of what is written about our people is probably not accurate um, and not from a first people's lens. So that's the first kind of piece. And that's where we're taking the submissions and the hearings. The second part is the sheer understanding. Um, so obviously, you know, we make up 2.5% of the population. We need others to do the work. We need to share what's happening um, to create that, that pressure and that systemic change. And then the last piece is that um, reform of a, of a standard probably Royal Commission around recommendations. So um, yeah, they're the three kind of objectives. And, and just timeline wise, 
we began in September 2021. Um, and we finish June 25. So uh, we'll be just under four years. And um, in August coming up in a couple of months, there'll be our kind of a, a, a middle report called a critical issues report. And that'll have all our hearings and findings and recommendations from our two most recent chapters, which I'll talk on in a minute, child protection and criminal justice. So just while we're here, I might get people to have a think or, or, or whack in the chat. Now I did see how many people have heard of your rook. Um, it was 13 of 70 had heard of your rook. So I'm, I'm not optimistic that we'll know too many of the commissioners here, but I'm hopeful and it's an opportunity to, to potentially um, learn about a few community members and, and elders. So just in your, in your chat or in your head, how many of the five commissioners here could you name? Um, let's just take 15 to 20 seconds. Um, Carol knows them all. Good. Amazing, Carol. <laughs> so in Hunter James, good. It's really okay if you don't know any because we're going to share them with you. Yeah, yeah, don't be sorry. Don't be sorry. Oh. I just thought it's an opportunity to, to, yeah, to see if you know any commissioners that are, that are undertaking this historic um, chapter in Victoria's history. So we might go through some of the, the commissioners in a moment. We're getting a few. Three, someone three, AMC, good. Um, so we've got five, as, as, a, as a video said, so we've got four First Nations, three Victorian traditional owners. So um, our first is... Um, Aunty Eleanor Burke, our chair on the left there. Um, and they all they all bring certain skill sets, which is really important. So, um, you know, cultural heritage, trauma lenses, land justice, data sovereignty, education, all things that we're going to be looking at throughout the, the, the massive mandate we've been given from the government. So our next um, commissioner is Commissioner Sue Ann Hunter. Our next commissioner is Commissioner Travis Lovett. So them three are all Victorian traditional owners, which is really important. Um, commissioner Maggie Walter down the bottom left. And she's a Palawa woman, and then Commissioner Kevin Bell, and then Aboriginal um, kind of lawyer, Supreme Court judge. So really rich kind of skill set that we benefit, we all benefit from. Thanks, Sarah. Um, we mentioned about some some public hearings. So you may have um, seen on our website, or you may have even come in, and, and the public were able to join some of these as well. We've had our submissions to gather evidence, but we also have public hearings, and, and these kind of get, um, I suppose, the most media coverage if you're if you're watching news or papers and. So we're fortunate enough to have the late Uncle Jack Charles kick us off at Charcoal Lane in April 2022. So that's a year ago now. Um, and we heard from eight elders, the Minister of Aboriginal Affairs and the co-chairs of the Assembly just around their stories. Um, we, we, we wanted to start with our elders as obviously they're the knowledge holders, but also the most precious. And, um, and, that, and we're really fortunate to hear Uncle Jack's story before he passed. Um, in December, recently, we just heard about from Aboriginal leaders, so ACOs, Aboriginal Community Controlled Organisations, around their experience in intersection with um, the justice system and, and child protection and these kind of issues that they work in every day and what works and doesn't work for them. Then we also heard from community people who had experience in these systems as well, um, so that you're putting together a big piece and a big story of what does, what doesn't work, what are the trends, what's happening. And then we recently just finished up our government hearings where we had Minister for Police, Attorney Generals, um, heads of DFFH, all these kind of things. So um, really powerful, um, keeping them accountable, which is something that the community have been asking for. Um, and, and that's all going to be in the interim report coming up. So I just want you to have a think for a little bit. So the two um, inquiry areas that we've spoken about so far is child protection and criminal justice. So I might just go back one slide, Sarah, if that's all right. Um, people might have worked with Aboriginal young people. They might work with Aboriginal families. Um, they might read things in the paper or their, their current affairs. I just want you to have a think. There's no, you can you can put in the chat if you need to, or just have a think. What might be some of the things that we've heard at Yarook so far in, in our last kind of six to eight months around these two things of child protection and criminal justice that they probably don't work for, for our people. So have a think about those two systems, criminal justice and child protection, and just some of the things that might not work for our people, some laws, some systems, some policies, um, some services that, that may or may not be there. Um, and then I'll unpack what we've been hearing. So someone's just typed in racist systems. Um, yeah, if you don't have if you don't have access to working with or, or talking to Aboriginal people who have experienced this, then um, bias in how decisions are made, great one, Beck. Um, you may hear about it on the news because there has been a little bit of um, I suppose, better work from government around tweaking some of these changes. Yep, separate from families and child protection, one size fits all. Absolutely, this is what we're hearing. Um, and, and so as I mentioned, disproportionate rates of removal, kinship care, yep, spot on. 
So these are all things that we heard at VACA as well. And, and now they're still, they're still super pertinent, which is super frustrating in 2023. And hence why this work's really important, um, all stemming from colonization. So might just give it another 10 seconds. Yep, so not understanding the kinship family, it's very nuclear. Cultural awareness in a lot of government services. Age of criminal responsibility and death in custody. Bang, both of them are going to be on my list. And both of those things that are happening in the state at the moment that are real high agenda items at the moment. Death in custody, spot on, Georgia. Um, we might go to the slide, Sarah, and just talk through the first lot. So thanks for, for everyone for sharing. Yeah, that was that was really um yeah, and moving young people to ACOs, so section 18. So the child protection system, um, we've heard the overrepresentation of Aboriginal kids in care, still way, way, way too high. Um, being removed first and not as a last resort, so that, that preventative services and family connection piece is not there. Um, someone mentioned about that, not knowing kinship family structures of our, of our kids and families and, and who might be able to support. Um, lack of cultural plans, so every kid in anaphone care um, needs to have a cultural plan that shows who they are and how they're going to stay connected as a as a strength. Um, I think 43% of kids in anaphone care have a cultural plan, even though they're mandated. So um, that's that's really poor. And, and the greater need for support for care is we hear, um, especially if our kids are with kinship carers and family, the supports they get compared to a foster carer is, is insignificant. So um, they're all massive issues that we've heard in the CP system. And then I'll flick over to um, criminal justice and the link in that pathway, so kids that go into the child protection system ending up in justice is still really high. Um, bail laws, um, the minimum age of criminal responsibility has been a big talking point in Victoria and, and Dan Andrews at the moment. I think they're lifting that to, it sounds 12 and then 14 in 2027 is their plan at the moment. Public drunkenness laws, um, again, later this year, that will be, I suppose, beginning. Um, so, so your rooks played a part in this with that political pressure and that, that landscape. And then something that we hear a lot about, um, especially from our community witnesses, was police accountability and oversight. Um, and some of those things that just, yeah, nothing's being followed through. And it's, it's all in-house. So really kind of um, frustrating, I suppose, at the same time, because those who will be aware here that in 1991, we had the um, Destin Custody Royal Commission where minimal actions were kind of followed through by government. And then we had tomorrow's anniversary of Sorry Day, which was the Bring In and Home Report in 97, which talked about stolen gen and people being removed. So those two issues are pretty much what we've looked at here. And um, we're, we're, we're excited that things are moving, but they're just moving way too slow and people are passing um, in our system. So um, the next area we're going to look at is land justice, which will kind of begin in a few months once this um, report lands. And and that'll scope from everything, disposition, colonisation, and all the things that come with that. Um, and for the educators in the room, education is going to be on the agenda in early 2024, which um, which is exciting, and all the systems that, that keep our kids out. So thanks, Sarah. I'm going to jump to another Mentimeter. We're really interested in um, your some of the things that you do currently um, with your self-learning about First Nations history, cultures and perspectives. This one's a word cloud. So we're, um, the Mentimeter should be prompting you to add in some uh, responses to this. Again, you can go to menti.com if the QR code isn't working. Lovely. Here we see some popping up. <clears throat> I love a word cloud because it shows um, the links and the commonalities that people um, have in this space. Workshops, Naragunawali, yeah, Indigenous X, it's a fabulous resource. So Sarah, you're the expert here. So is listen and read, are they becoming, are they yeah. bigger because they're amplified? Correct. Love the it, bigger love the it. words, the more people um, or the words that are most similar to that are the most common yeah, that great. people are typing in. Yep. <clears throat> Just shows there's so much out there these days, isn't there? Like I'm seeing reconciliation work, discussion, staying ground, like everything's it's, yeah. it's becoming more available, which is great. And people, Eight ways. it's more accessible. Eight ways is in there. We'll, we'll get yeah. to that one. Yeah. No, we love that you're preempting a lot of the stuff that we're going to talk about later. It means that people are really tuned in already. And for those that you don't know these things, then we're so happy to be able to share them with you. Love that. Watch documentaries. It's a really nice way to just to mm -hmm. learn in, in, in a way that can be not as confronting. Listen to wise colleagues if you're, if you're fortunate enough to have 
Aboriginal community employed with you. Um, we'll also yeah, be sharing and... some, sorry, Brent, we'll be sharing oh, some right. links to um, some documentaries and podcasts in the resource sheet as well. Obviously just a couple on this one, but hopefully a really good starting point for people who might not have um, delved that deeply into this space before. Before we go to the next slide, Sarah, I might just say, so the, the reason we kind of asked about the self-learning, um, obviously it's always a journey, like Sarah mentioned that before in her introduction, and um, we as Aboriginal people, they're, they're continuing, there's no, there's no cultural competence, like, right, there's no, that's not a word, like, we, we're always on that journey of learning, um, and there's always, that 60,000-year-old culture, there's always more to learn, so, um, you know, I'm enjoying every day learning heaps more, and it's great that people want to keep learning with this kind of stuff and the reason we ask this question here because sometimes people just want to jump into all right give me a curriculum resource or tell me how I can do something for one class and I think um, if you're well-minded you know a really good ally you're doing the self-learning you're um, you're increasing your knowledge then that will feed into really good classroom or education setting practice so to actually know and and be really generous genuine and want to learn and read and watch and listen you're doing that stuff you're filling up you're understanding what you need to learn and, and you're you're vulnerable and you're listening and all those kind of things then that will come into your practice and your 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 practice will be enriched because of that so um learning first and then i suppose embedding second is, is what i'm trying to say definitely i completely reiterate that and as education educators it's important to be learners as well in this space Sure. And it's a fascinating lifelong journey, as Brent said as well. There's always more to learn. Um, and the more you know, the more um, enriched you are. All right, we'll pop over to the next slide. So um, a lot of these will be on, these are just some, some things that I've found uh, over the next couple of slides that, that work in regards to, for, for my journey of teaching and embedding and learning. So this is that self-learning piece we just talked about. And, and a lot of these you've all referenced, but just to stay updated in the space. So I mentioned before about the voice, First Peoples and your Rook. There's three, um, three big things happening in the country, two in our own backyard in Victoria. We've got in a couple more years, the treaty thing is ongoing. So just to stay updated with newsletters, websites, hearings, articles, just to, just to stay abreast of what's happening. Like I'll just run through child protection and criminal justice and you're all pretty over what's happening, but um, they're all relevant issues and, and it's, it's really interesting kind of listening and there's a lot of resources you can pull from that too. So just staying updated is really important. The next one um, can be small, but it also can be really big. So to so learning about, then connecting and then potentially bringing in or working with the community in your area. So um, I've just got two examples there of the Jaja Wrong Aboriginal Co-op and VACA. So one, you know, traditional owner groups and, and kind of Aboriginal services that um, everyone I've seen has come in from different countries around Victoria. Some of you will be great to have, you know, you might have an ACO next door, you might have a traditional owner group that's contested and these kind of things as well. So just learning about what's in your vicinity, um, where the, the people in your care might be connected into, organising a catch up, learning more about them. And then obviously the great kind of gold carrot is bring them in and working with community in a nice way. So that's another step. Um, we, we saw a lot of this in the in the Mentimeter just by watching, listening and reading to First Nations artists. So um, obviously some people here might have seen In My Blood It Runs as an example of, of a young person in a classroom setting, really relevant to today. Um, we also saw about documentaries, things like the Australian Wars, First Australians, um, kind of really powerful, um, you know, honest, raw kind of footage that you can watch in your own space and then kind of decompress and unpack afterwards. But kind of succinct truth telling in documentaries, which can be easier to digest than people that aren't readers or that don't want to have the conversation because it can be a bit full on. Um, the other bit is, is Decolonising Solidarity is a, is a book that I've um, begun reading and heard a lot about, how to become a really good ally and, and do the work yourself as well. Um, the last bit, um, attend events and special dates. I think obviously I mentioned Reconciliation Week coming up and, and people will hear about NADOC Week and these kind of things, but um, the, the calendar is, is kind of 12 months of the year and it's not just the one day in NADOC you're going to go do something. So I reckon being aware of what's around on the calendar, but then also like practicing what you preach and attending. Uh, Aboriginal people love when allies and, and non-Aboriginal people come to events. So I know, for example, the, the Jan 26th March is now 
attended by more non Aboriginal people than Aboriginal people. And we had 100,000 last year. So um, that, just, that just means that everyone's involved. Don't be scared to you know, um, come along and, and get involved. And, and again, see what's in your local community is probably a good place to start. The last, the last bit, again, is just a bit of self-learning, is, is supporting some Aboriginal businesses. So um, Clothing the Gaps, people would have heard of with their, their canteens, uh, their campaigns, sorry. Um, Kenya Lurk in Preston have, I think, 300-odd businesses, First Nations-owned businesses in their, in their shop. And then um, for other people, um, Supply Nation have, I think, 3,500 um, it is amazing that shop. Say good day to Emma and Megan when you're in there. Um, three and a half thousand businesses, Aboriginal owned led businesses. So again, there's no there's no excuse not to kind of at least try to to, to engage Aboriginal people, businesses, um, and just keep learning. So that's that first part that we talked about is self learning, and I was really excited to see some of those answers in that um, Mentimeter just before. I'll just add in a bit about clothing the gaps. I love that they have ally friendly. Um, attire and um, jewellery that you can wear, which is a really powerful way of showing your support as an ally to wearing a T-shirt, um, earrings, sparking a conversation that way. And just wearing a T-shirt in a classroom is a perfect way to stimulate um, a conversation in the space. Spot on. So, Spot on. Yeah. so another Mentimeter, a word cloud. Again, we'd love to know how might you embed First Nations truths and culture into your classroom and school setting? It can be things that you're doing currently or some ideas you've had just from what you've heard in the webinar here. So this is probably that next step um, around, you know, how can I improve my practice? What can, what can I do to, to embed truths and culture into my school? So not just curriculum ideas, but, but probably education settings in general. Um, and, and you might be doing them. You might want to try them. Lovely. Someone's coming through. Brilliant. I encourage you to think really broadly on this, as Brent said, it's not just about things that you'll actually, lessons that you'll deliver in the classroom, but the environment that um, you're in and connections to the broader community, the local community of the land that your school or early learning centre is on. Acknowledgement is coming out as one of the biggest things. Teaching history, giving it a go. That's right. It's one thing I hear a lot in this space that a lot of people are very scared to teach because they're afraid of saying the wrong thing. But I think a lovely way of addressing that is acknowledging to your class that you're on the learning journey as well and that you don't have to be an expert in this space. We've got so many, they're getting so small, it's hard for us to read. Yeah, I know. I'm going to get some glasses. But yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm seeing a lot of books, acknowledgements, smokings, yarning circles. Like these are all really good, kind of tangible ideas for people to embed truths and get kind of. Yeah or, you know, develop culture in your school settings. Um, Eight Ways is coming up as a big thing. Yeah, it's really lovely. On. Yeah. Songs, yep. Music's powerful. Some of that physical stuff of flags and um, artwork, again, um, is, is great. And, and obviously to take it to the next step is obviously understanding what the flags mean or understanding, um, you know, if you're going to get local artist in, you know, Emma Bamblett, for example, who's at Kenya Lurk, you know, I know Reservoir East Primary have a big mural of hers and, and then the story connected to that and, and making sure people are aware. So mm. I saw Campfire Conversations. That's something I'll reference as well coming up. They're really, they're really amazing um, kind of practices. So the way I thought I'd, I'd split this up, everyone's going to be on a different journey, a different spot, um, which is which is fine. And that's that's great. So so some people will probably be more, just hold off Sarah okay. one sec. Um, mm -hmm. Some people will probably be more in that self-learning. So you're probably not feeling confident enough to, to, to develop or um, have those conversations in your classroom or with teachers. And you still probably want to learn yourself more about the space and about our culture and our people and to build confidence to bring into your work. Um, and that's fine. There might be this first level. So um, we'll go through in a minute some of the existing documents and policies and resources that, that people might use. And that's that's again completely fine and and a step in the right direction because you've got some confidence. There are existing resources, so they're approved. They're they're going to best practice. They're 
they're around um, and they're specific. And then there might be that next stop um, is that second level of embedding everything into what you do front and center. So that's that kind of journey that people might be on. And I, I just want you to reflect on where you might be as we as we discuss. So some of these first things will go, Sarah. Um, I'll just interject to say people yeah, don't feel in. like you have to scribble all this down. We're putting all of these um, cool. links and and um, mentions in, in the resource sheet for you. So write by all means, but don't feel like you have to because they're so important. We want to be able to share it as a resource after the webinar. And I want to I want to reference as well. Um, for example, like I said, curriculum before. That's that's one thing. Like you can have the best written First Nations curriculum, but on its own, it won't fix everything. Like that's one element. And I'm sure you're all aware here in the room. Like we need to increase teacher confidence. We need supportive leadership. All these kind of things together in harmony create a really good learning environment. So um, that's why I've tried to get the bigger picture for us to kind of understand. So. Um, the Morung um, Aboriginal Education Policy is a, is a really good guiding document from 2016 to 2026 that VI, the kind of principal education partner, um, Aboriginal lead education body and the government have developed together. And it has a lot of kind of from, from kindergarten to, to kind of completion of high school and university um, targets that it's relevant to Victoria and, and ways that you can kind of be involved. Um, so that's a really good starting point if you haven't read Morung. Your local Keso is again, an established system. I think there's 91 Kezos in Victoria um, and they're assigned to school. So um, Anisha, the Spike Workshop is great for, for leaders and, um, and principals so they can get involved. And there's one coming up in June. Um, Kezos, so, so they kind of, the Curie Education Support Officer, work with schools and community to kind of support Aboriginal families and students in that space. Um, they, they can vary. So some Kezos are overworked and they have probably too many schools, but some can be really beneficial in engaging the community, supporting curriculum um, and, and First Nations um, part of engagement as well. So Curie Education Support Officer is a good one to, to connect with. Reconciliation Victoria, who we're here with at the moment, have obviously some series of resources that, that you can tap into. And I think I just saw um, Arnie Louise Peeler's um, webinar in the chat as well and, and some of the ongoing stuff there. Um, Someone mentioned campfire conversations before. So there's a new initiative last year that the Curie Outcomes Division based in the department. So the Aboriginal body in the department um, led by Zach Haddock and Matt Lillist. So self-determination education is a new initiative um, where um, schools are, are given a, an allocation of money to bring in the Aboriginal community. So that's what we talked about before is sometimes schools can be a bit nervous how to bring in that Aboriginal community or what to do. So we had these conversations and it's just from COD, there we go. Um, so we have, um, you know, campfire conversations with students and community about what the school needs, what's gonna happen. And then we can spend that money to bring in community. And the aim is that hopefully it's done once and there's that connection. And then there'll be that ongoing community feel with um, community members, ACOs, whatever that might be into a school. So if your school hasn't, um, yeah, heard about self-determination in education initiative, get on board. I know schools are starting to action that now. Now, VAI, um, a lot of people have heard of VAI. Um, they're the, the principal education partner. So a lot of teachers I speak to get confused, and, and it's fair enough. VAI are like the lead policy. Um, so they, you know, Morang, um, department policy, not as much program on the ground services. So um, just be aware there. But one thing that, that teachers can take away is the Curious Perspectives newsletter. So I'll be signing up to that. And what it has, it's a monthly newsletter that goes out that has links, like direct links to which parts of the eight learning um, areas that's, that we look at, you know, history, maths, et cetera, et cetera. So they will spell out resources, things we're speaking about today and how you can link it into your curriculum spelled out for you. So um, a really, really good resource that I would recommend highly. Um, SBS Teaching Resources, uh, a plug to every year, Shelly Ware makes a NADOC resource that's, that's again, prep the, to 12 um, around our culture, celebrated in a way of strength and not talked about in a, in a detrimental way. Um, so the SBS teaching NADOC resources are really important. Um, and I think we might have one more is the Narragana Wally as um, everyone may be aware. So, so RAPS or Reconciliation Action Plans in general are happening, but this is RAPS in schools. And, and I write organizational organization accountability. So um, for those who are wanting to push the boundaries and make sure best practices in your school and setting 
if you have a if you have a wrap in your school, that's your kind of anchor to kind of push things through, right? If you've got some challenging leadership, or um, you know, if if things aren't kind of getting moving, you've got the wrap in place. You've got that agenda and that kind of anchor to push things through. So um, they, you sign up to Nagarwa Wally. I think there's 42 different action areas, and you can sign up to 14 and different ways to bring in community, to have resources, to support self determination, all these kind of things, and. Um, yeah, it's a really good experience and, and something that you'd have a little bit of a wrap kind of working group going as well. So um, so those are all things that are existing. Um, they're out there. They're Victorian specific. Um, they're relevant and live and they're there for you. So if you've seen them before, maybe have a look and see how can I start to bring something into my space. The second level of things I want to talk about is probably um, how you can embed things in your practice every day. So um, one thing I talk about is curriculum. Um, but backwards planning from the start. So we had a meeting with VCAA recently and there's um, the cross-curriculum priorities. So the aim is, um, you know, Aboriginal history and Aboriginal people and our, and our, our culture is not a certain subject, but it's meant to be woven in through the cross-curriculum priorities with, I think, sustainability and Asia engagement. So that, that's, that's problematic because it's not always set. There's, there's, there's learn in the eight learning areas, we are plugged into certain pieces. It's not consistent. Um, but I would say just trying to have that there. Um, there's, there's kind of these thematic ideas of country, place and people. So if you look on the VCLO website, that's a really good organising ideas of how you can embed some of our things. And um, Australian curriculum just, just approved version nine. We're kind of taking that to another level to make it better and bigger in Victoria at the moment. So again, just to look at the curriculum, um, probably use it as a guide, especially in regards to our space. You can always make things embedded with, with VAI as well. So um, a good start. The next one, Sarah. Groups of practice within school. I, I always found it was easier to work with, with other groups of like-minded people when you're, when you're teaching or even at your organisations, early learning centres. Um, it takes the burden off yourself. You might be able to, you know, things like the wrap, you might be able to do together. Things like monthly learning, things like Friday reflection groups or, you know, the history teachers or, whatever you want to do, school leadership um, activities or ceremonies, just doing things together and groups of practices within your settings is really helpful. I saw the CUS training before. Um, so the CUS training, cultural understanding and safety training is a three hour workshop delivered by the Kezos. So again, when you're, when you're yelling with them, just mention that we are due for some CUS training and that's a really good kind of cultural awareness um, building activity for, for two to three hours. We saw the eight ways learning pedagogy come through kind of loud and clear before. And, and again, um, from, from my experience over the last couple of years, eight ways learning is, is just good teaching. It's not just for the one Aboriginal kid you might have, or you might not have any Aboriginal kids. Eight ways pedagogy is a, is a way to teach. And um, some examples is, is through, you know, stories and using that as a narrative. So the story I'm telling is a narrative or the image. So I'm looking at images and I'm understanding concepts through image or community links so that the eight ways is, is really readily, readily available, but just using some certain types of teaching and pedagogy to, in, to engage all kids. Um, and I, I was really happy to see um, in both of those Mentimeters people talk about the eight ways learning pedagogy. So again, something that you would talk about with your group. Um, for kids that, for teachers that have um, kids in out-of-home care or, or in the system, um, cultural support plans and genograms are really powerful. Um, I mentioned before that not a lot of, young people have them or not enough do, but just to learn more about that young person, more about their culture, their family. So a genogram is a, is a family tree per se, but it has so much more depth and, and it's not always blood related and shows who the important people are in those people's families. So that might give you options to, again, bring people in and those kind of things as well. Um, and just with this last piece, like we talked about your rook at the moment and we've got our report in August and then next year we'll have education. Like, just trying to listen where possible to what works for community. So some of those people that had those campfire conversations would have heard, you know, we don't have enough of this or we need more of this or we don't do this in our school. Just try and do that as much as you can. So it might be, I saw people mention yarding circles before or, you know, where you can employ Aboriginal staff, listening to community voices where possible um, to learn what is best and then maybe even unlearn what you need to unlearn and, and what a traditional school shouldn't be. Um, but just to, just to really, you know, um, just take the, have a look at which stage you might be in, um, take some of those things away and just start to chip away, I think is really important. Um, thanks, Sarah. And I, I thought I'd just leave kind of everyone with something. Um, you know, a lot of Aboriginal people don't kind of work just nine to five. It's, 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 we go home and 
try and switch off, but there's social media, there's the racism piece, there's asking questions, you know, we make up a really small percentage of the population. Um, so I think what I want to say is don't just try to be a supported person nine to five. Like I know you hear the late webinar, which is awesome, but but try to do it in your own lives as well, like your own personal lives, like your family conversations, dinner conversations. Um, and, and that just means so much more naturally that you're, um, you'll become, you'll learn about our history. You'll become a better ally. You'll, you'll embed it into your work. So um, an example for me here is this, obviously I do my work and I do my own cultural journey and everything else. But, but last year I played, um, well, this year as well, I played football at Beechworth and um, up there, it's a little bit probably more racist than, than, than probably the Melbourne kind of community. And um, we have four First Nations players at the club and thought it'd be a good idea to create an indigenous round for, for the Talangata league up there. And, um, you know, committee was super on board and um, designed one of our fellows designed some singlets, had ceremony, had community coming on the day, shared our stories on the Thursday night, um, had us, you know, it was an amazing day. And then this year, we're taking it to another level and the league have formally kind of endorsed um, the round and, and every other club is, is doing, doing their own thing and in, engaging their own Aboriginal players. So just small things like that that you can do just to keep kind of plugging away. And, 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 it's, and I think it means so much more when it's just not nine to five or just reconciliation week or just one off NADOC, it's, um, it's ongoing. So I just want to leave you with that. Um, and, and, and thanks so much for today, everyone. We'd just love to get um, our last Mentimeter from you guys. Um, we just want to know after today how much more confident you feel about incorporating First People's Truth and culture into your practice. Um, but also, as Brent said, like I think it's really important for us as allies in the space, um, speaking on behalf of myself, to practice this continuously, not just in our um, day jobs, but as an ongoing truth. I think change can begin with one person. And if you are the person that's educating those around you or sharing knowledge that you've gained, then you're making a really powerful um, step. And I always say to educators as well, you're in such a privileged and amazing position to be able to shape the lives of young people in this space and, and ultimately shape reshape the nation. Um, most of us of a certain generation learn nothing of truth in school and it's just so inspiring for me to work in this space along with fabulous First Nations experts um, to be able to help shift the dynamic, which is, yeah, it's, a, it's quite, quite a powerful space and a powerful position that you have. And don't be scared of that too, I think. <laughs> I don't want to scare people by saying that it's a really lovely space for you to be in. We'd also open to a few questions. We've got a few minutes before the end if anyone has any questions for Brent. Um, I will say that we have our next webinar on the 15th of June and that will be about um, incorporating Western teaching perspectives with First Nations perspectives and how to um, become the learner as the educator in this space. So Dr. Kate Harvey will be hosting our next webinar, which will be a great one. Sarah, the, uh, I think there's a few questions. Handout will be, was that emailed out, the handout? Yes, we'll email yeah. that to everyone yeah. who registered for the webinar, not just participants. So and I would really love for you to share it widely with anybody um, <clears throat> also, yeah that is in, in the space or in any educators. It's not just the people who attended the webinar today. And we do record it as well. So if any of your colleagues <clears throat> weren't able to attend, obviously they can't participate in the Mentimeter, but we'd love you to share the resource as well. And links to our webinars will be listed on the resource sheet as well. So thank you so much, everyone. We really appreciate taking you taking the time out of your busy schedules and hopefully we can see you at the next webinar and ones into the future to be able to enhance your learning and teaching in this space. Thank you, everyone.